today. Hallelujah. Then all of us will do Proverbs 28 together. Then we move on from there by God's grace and his mercy. To just speak in the spirit. Thank you. Can everybody hear me, please? Yes, we can. Yes, yes, we can. Okay. Thank you. Yes, Masu Kabahanda Rabasu Kabron Diriandi. Mande Rebezu Kabande Rebeze Kabahanda Rabasu Kabron Diri Kabahanda Rababa. Lebahanda Rababa, Zuka Bronzi and Rababa, Makataraba, Zuka Bronzi, Kabahanda Rababa, Zuka Baka, Lebrahanda Rababa, Zuka Bandi, Kaba, Lebahanda Rababa, Zuka Bronzi, Kabahandi, Kaba, Ribadu, Bahanda Rabba, Zuka Banda Rababa, Zuka Banda Rababa, Kaba, Lebrahandi, Rebezu. Kabahanda Rababa, Ibrahim Baraba, Kabahanda Rabba, Zuka Bruni, Bahanda Rabba, Zuka Braham, Kaba, Mazuka Bahanda Rababa, Ibaba, Ibaba, Kabahanda Rababa, Zuka Bahanda Rabba, Zuka Bram, Kaba, and the Kabraham Baraba, Zuka Bahanda Rabba, Zuka Bahanda Abraham, the Rabbas, the Lord of the Lord, take over, 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 take Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father. Let's be your name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, this evening. Jesus Christ. We activate. Yes, the horn of the Father. Amen. The horn of the Son. Amen. The horn of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We activate the horn of the Father. Amen. The horn of the Son, Jesus. Amen. The horn of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We activate yes, the Lord. horn of the Father. Yes, Lord. The horn of Jesus. Yes, the Lord. The horn of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay, Amen. so I will start with Psalm 24. I want volunteers. Okay, I've seen two people so far. And then one more. Okay, thank you. So let's go to Psalm 24 as we start possessing the gate, instructing the gate to be lifted up. Let the King of glory come in with us. So let's go to Psalm 24 from the New King James. The earth is a loss in all its fullness, the world and those who dwell therein. For he has found it upon the seas and established it upon the waters. Who may ascend into the hill of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy place? Who has clean hands and a pure heart? Who has not lifted up his soul to an idol, nor sworn the suffering? He shall receive the blessing from the Lord and righteousness for the God of his salvation. This is Yima. This is us. This is Jacob. The generation of those who seek him, who seek your face. Lift up your heads, O you gate, and be you lift up 
you everlasting doors. And a king of glory shall come in. Who is this king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O your gate. Lift up you everlasting doors, and a king of glory shall come in. Who is this king of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is a king of glory. Who is this king of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is a king of glory. We instruct the gate, the 12 gate of our soul, the 12 systems in our body. Be lifted up. Be lifted up. Let the king of glory come in with us. We instruct the gate of this hour. The gate of the nation be open and be lifted up. Let the gate of the family be lifted up and open. Let the gate of Ecclesia, let the gate of the eighth gate of the society, let the gate of the body of God, the church of Christ, let the gate of this hour, this moment be lifted up. And let the king of glory come in with us. We instruct the gate of marriages, relationship. We instruct the gate of fathers, mothers, aunties, uncles, nieces, cousins, nephews, every member of our family, our generation, our ancestry, our lineage, be lifted up. Let the king of glory come in with us. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Let me leave it like that. God bless us. Please, the next person. Praise the Lord. I'm going to read Psalm 88, and I'm going to read from the New Living Translation tonight. O Lord, God of my salvation, I cry out to you by day, and I come to you by night. Now hear my prayer and listen to my cry. For my eyes is full of troubles and death draw near. I am as good as dead, like a strong man with no strength left. They have left me among the dead, and I lie like a corpse in the grave. I am forgotten, cut off from, my, from your care. You have thrown me into the lowest pit and into the darkest depth. Your anger weighed me down with wave after wave. You have engulfed me. You have driven my friends away by making me repulsive to them. I am in a trap with no way of escape. My eyes are blinded by my tears. Every day I beg for your help, O Lord. I lift up my hands to you for your mercy and your wonderful deeds of any use to the dead. Do the dead raise up and praise you. Can those in the grave declare your unfailing love? Can they proclaim your unfaithfulness in the place of destruction? Can the darkness speak of your wonderful deeds? Can anyone in the land of forgetfulness talk about your righteousness? Oh Lord, I cry out to you. I will keep on pleading day by day. Oh Lord, why do you reject me? Why do you turn your face from me? I have been sick and close to death since my youth. I stand helpless and des desperate before your terror. Your face anger has overwhelmed me. Your terror has paralyzed me. The swirl ring around me like floodwaters all day long. They have engulfed me, with, engulfed me completely. You have taken away my compassions and loved one. Darkness is, in clo is, closest, is my closest friend. Amen. 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 Psalm, Psalm, Psalm 35. 35. Psalm 35. Yes, I read from New King James Version. Plead my cause, O Lord, with those who strive with me. Fight against those who fight against me. Take oh. hold of shield and buckler oh. and stand up for my help. Also mm. draw out the spear and stop those who pursue me. Mm. Say to my soul, I am your salvation. Mm. Let those be put to shame and brought to dishonor. Who seek after my life 
Yes. Let those be turned back and brought to confusion who plot my hurt. Let them be like chaff before the wind and mm. let the angels of the Lord chase them. Mm. Let their way be dark and slippery and let the angel of the Lord pursue them. For mm. without cause, they have hidden their net for me in a pit, which they have dug without cause for my life. Let destruction come upon him unexpectedly and let his net that he has hidden catch himself. Into that very destruction, let him fall. And my soul shall be joyful in the Lord. It shall rejoice in his salvation. All my bones shall say, Lord, who is like you? Delivering the poor from him who is too strong for him. Yes, the poor and the needy from him who plunders him. Fierce witnesses rise up. They ask me things that I do not know. They reward me evil for good to the sorrow of my soul. But as for me, when they were sick, my clothing was sackcloth. I humbled myself with fasting and my prayer would return to my own heart. I paced about as though he were my friend or brother. I bowed down heavily as one who mourns for his mother. But in my adversity, they rejoiced and gathered together. Attackers gathered against me and I did not know it. They tore at me and did not cease with ungodly mockers at feasts. They gnashed at me with their teeth. Lord, how long will you look on? Rescue me from their destructions. My precious life from the lions. I will give you thanks in the great assembly. I will praise you among many people. Let them not rejoice over me who are wrongfully my enemies. Nor let them wink with the eye who hates me without a cause. For they do not speak peace, but they devise deceitful matters against the quiet ones in the land. They also opened their mind, mouth wide against me and said, aha, aha, our eyes have seen it. This you have seen, O Lord. Do not keep silent. O Lord, do not be far from me. Stir up yourself and awake to my vindication, to my cause, my God and my Lord. Vindicate me, O, my, o Lord, my, my God, according to your righteousness. And let them not rejoice over me. Let them not say in their hearts, ah, so we would have it. Let them not say we have swallowed him up. Let them be ashamed and brought to mutual confusion. Who rejoice at my hurt. Let them be clothed with shame and dishonor. Who exalt themselves against me. Let them shout for joy and be glad. Who favor my righteous cause. And let them say continually, let the Lord be magnified, who has pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. And my tongue shall speak at your righteousness and of your praise all the day long. Praise you, the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Please, the next person. Psalm 99, uh, reading the New King James Version. The Lord reigns, let the peoples tremble. He dwells between the cherubim, let the earth be moved. The Lord is great in Zion, and he is high above all the peoples. Let them praise your great and awesome name. He is holy. The king's strength also loves justice. You have established equity. You have executed justice and righteousness in Jacob. Exalt the Lord our God and worship at his footstool. He is holy. Moses and Aaron were among his priests, and Samuel was among those who called upon his name. They called upon the Lord, and he answered them. He spoke to them in the cloudy pillar. They kept his testimonies and the ordinance he gave them. You answered them, O Lord our God. You were to them God who forgives, though you took vengeance on their deeds. Exalt the Lord our God and worship at his holy hill. For the Lord our God is holy. Amen. 
Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. Let's all of us turn to Proverbs 28 and pro proclaim it together. Proverbs 28, please. Okay. Is it going to be shared? No, please, we read it from our Bibles. Can you hear me, please? Yes, we can. Yes, sir. So we are doing it together, please. Okay. The wicked flee. The wicked flee. The wicked flee when no one pursues. No one pursues. The righteous. 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 The his possessions one by who all. One who increases his possessions by using an extortion. That is a person who will be the poor. Who will be poor. One who turns away his years from the year of the Lord. Even his prayers are not the same. Whoever causes the upright to go astray. Whoever causes the upright to go astray. The evil way. He himself will fall into his own pit. The blameless will be the blameless. The rich man is wise. The rich man is wise. Righteous rejoice. When the righteous rejoice, the when the wicked arise men hide themselves when they perish the righteous increase in the name of jesus that reminds me of uh, the book of Acts, chapter 12 when god sent an angel to smile someone herod 
The Bible says he was eaten alive by worm and die. And after he died, the gospel grew and multiplied. God, we ask for your mercy for those who are standing on our way. If they don't get out of the way, yes, Lord, Lord, send the angel to give them a slap. Amen. Let them be eaten alive. Amen. And die so that, Lord, the Amen. gospel, it's our good. life will grow and multiply Amen. in Amen. the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Maybe let me say that with us and we we'll pray with Isaiah. Maybe 60, then when the chief servant is ready, I just hand over to him. Let's go to the book of Acts. Chapter 12. We have to stop being defensive and be offensive. If they don't repent, God has to deal with them. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So you can read the book of Acts yourself. But I just want to go from just um, 20. Now Herod had been very angry with the people of Tyre and Sidon. But they came to him with one accord and, and have made him gladish. The king's personal aid, their friend. They asked for peace because their country was supplied with food by the king's country. So on a set day, Herod, a reign in royal apparel, sat on his throne and gave an oration to them. And the people kept shouting the voice of a God, not of a man. Hey, God, we ask for your mercy for those who are supposed to be praising you. Yes, And Lord. they refused. And they because refused. in Psalm 14, in Psalm 53, the Bible says only fools who say there is no God. When they are supposed to be praising God, Lord. they are praising themselves. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have if they mercy. turn not, but 23... Then immediately an angel of the Lord struck him because he did not give glory to God. Anything that does not give glory to God in your life, Lord, let them be uprooted and be thrown out. Amen. Amen. Lord, let them be smitten by God. Like Psalm 3 by seven, we say, Oh Lord, smite them on their jaw. In the name of Jesus. Anything that is not because they did not give glory to God. Not let them be he was eaten by worms and died. But the word of God grew and multiplied. So anything that does not give glory, that does not give God glory in your life, they have to give way. They must die so that your life will grow and multiply. So that the word of God, the seed that has been sown in you, What's will grow and multiply. I want us to put that prayer. Will... In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord, we are Father, praying for your heaven. The Holy that Spirit, Lord, help us. The Lord, things Lord. that is not allow us to grow, they must give way because the Bible said in Matthew 15 verse 13, whatsoever is not planted by our Father shall be uprooted and be thrown out. Please, I want to hear you pray. Let's pray together. In the name of Jesus, because the Bible says these are the Whatever things. Is not so in anything that is in this body, that is in our lives, that is not giving God glory. We are asking that let those be uprooted and be thrown out of our lives. Let us go 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 out of our lives. Let us go
The mothers will grow and multiply. The fathers will grow and multiply. In the name of Jesus Christ, our prayer lives, our wet intake will grow and multiply. Help me, Lord, to be We are asking for that help. Give me a passion for your word. In the name of Jesus. So anything in this 2022 that will not give God glory in our lives. Anything that will not give God glory. will not give glory. In that will not give God glory in the body of Christ, in the church of Christ. That will not give God glory in our marriages, in our relationships. Lord, send your angel to deal with them in the name of Jesus Christ. And when those things die out of us, Lord, the gospel grows and multiply in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. May the Lord help us. Amen. May the Lord help us. So this is what was happening. Said the man was not giving glory to God. He was disrespecting God. I am king. God said, no, you cannot continue your life this way. As we pray, God help us. The things that are in our lives, those sickness, those disease that are not giving glory to God, we command them to die. Amen. Any sickness, any disease, any infirmity that is again. not this giving is not God glory in our lives, let them die so die. that our in life will grow Jesus. and give God glory in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We bless you. Thank you, we Jesus. activate Thank you, Jesus. the nature Thank you, Jesus. of the Lord. temple Thank you, Jesus, Lord. Thank of you. the Father. Thank we you. activate for me, Lord. Thank the you. nature Thank you, Jesus. of the temple Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. of our Lord Jesus Christ. We Thank activate you, the nature Jesus. of the temple of the Holy Spirit. Tabernacle with us. Mm-hmm. Father, tabernacle with us. Tabernacle with us. Tabernacle with us. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. We bless you. Thank we you. give you praise. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. I don't know whether the chief servant is ready. I don't want to go to Isaiah 60. There's one because the Amplified says something very interesting. So please, when you are ready, let me know. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 60 and Amplified. Okay. Is ready. Yes. <laughs> well, praise the Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made. We'll rejoice and be glad in it. What a glorious day. What a glorious moment. What a glorious season that we live in. Uh, what we said today was the fact that we were going to use what we have learned to pray. So let's start this way. Let's hear from each one of you, uh, three, maximum five people, what you have learned so far. And for those that have done assignments, maybe I might give room for two more, which makes it maximum seven. And from there, we could actually have directions as to how to go about using all that we've learned to pray. Because that's what honestly, I was expecting to hear from you today. Yes, I've been here since before the uh, official starting time, though not actively on because I was on two different you know, devices, but let me leave it at that for now. Um, if I can see somebody indicate, and then we'll move on from there because the things that we have are so loaded, loaded, loaded. Oh, I thought I would have too many hands. Now I don't seem to have it. Is it that mm, what I said was not clear enough? I said, you know, we're expecting to hear what you've learned so far. And what would you, for example, if the fast ended today, what would be your main take home point or points. And then secondly, what is it that you have learned from even the assignments apart from whatever you've been taught? Mm. 
then thirdly we were now going we're now going to look at okay if we were to pray with that what would we do i've seen one hand that's a good start but i'm expecting more hands so we go to richard Hayford, i believe yes richard Hayford. go ahead shalom prophet shalom <laughs> yeah one thing that you know has been of particular interest because the lord had been speaking to me about it for quite a while is is the issue of mount zion and to a point that's why I'm, i was so glad when you, you know your the, the, you know your focus was going there and how critical and pivotal mount zion is in this whole issue of the government of god now um what 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 I've been receiving before, you know, listening to you. There's one, one particular thing that the Lord told me. He says, the minute I get on my knees to pray, I have literally hit Mount Zion. I mean, I'm not, I'm not on earth. Literally, I, I, am, I, I have come to Mount Zion. You know, <laughs> so when, you, know you, have, you have come to Mount Zion, the city of the living God, the new Jerusalem. So what I've been trying, this, this is from what you were saying, Mount, Mount Zion actually then becomes uh, 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 what we are, literally. Because if you look at, um, you look at um, Isaiah, Isaiah 60, it act, we are actually referred to, Ecclesia is actually referred to as the city of the Lord, Mount Zion. So we are representative. We literally have to carry Mount Zion here. We, we, we are Mount Zion on earth. So I was, I was greatly blessed with um, what, what you had to say about Mount Zion, but we need to, we need to, we need to delve deep and, um, in, in terms of how we actually practicalize the, the you know, um, the, uh, in, in prayer, how we practical, practicalize that in prayer to establish the government of God on earth in our various spheres of, of, of operation. So I was greatly blessed by that. That's what I, I learned, you know, uh, impressed greatly upon my heart. So that's Great. it. Great. Excellent. Yes, um, Arlene. Arlene Olahi, go ahead. Shalom, sir. Yes, go ahead. Um, I, I want to say what, you know, for me, what I've learned, um, learning and, and putting into please practice. Increase your volume a bit, please. I, I think it's more learning and putting it into practice for me. Okay. Um, because there was something that, you know, that really happened this morning. As, you know, I, as I wake up every morning, I wake up with a mindset that I am God representative here on earth. And you know, I'm, I'm going to dictate. So what, as we've been online learning so many different things and, you know, especially there was one part that talked about, you know, we become the temple, the temple of God. I mean, we prayed that, but, you know, we prayed that, but that, that particular time we prayed it, it kind of put a shift in my mindset. And so when I go out, it's like, I go out with this thing in this direction that I am, Everywhere I go, I'm, I'm dictating how that place or that situation is gonna, gonna, you know, what I'm expecting and how it should look like and what God would expect. But this morning I woke up and of course I was, you know, getting ready to do my devotional. And then the particular scripture just, you said that from henceforth that when we read the word of God, we will read it in a different light and revelation will come forward and come forward. Well, I want to share something this morning and a particular scripture in Matthew 6, 33, and I was just reading it and quoting it, you know, and all of a sudden, you know, it's like my spirits, they go back, kingdom, kingdom, kingdom. And I started reading it and it said, you know, when it says, seek ye first the kingdom of God, you know, and then I started saying, wait a minute, kingdom and all other things. And so many times we thought about in, in terms of salvation and when you get your intimacy and you work with God and and then that other part that says, and all things would be added. And it's like, it's like there was a whole different um, 
it's like something lit up inside of me that I even have to wake my husband and say, wait a minute, hold on, hold on, hold on. Seek ye first the kingdom. God rules, God way of doing things, God in every area of my life, you know, in my family, in my home, in my business, as I walk, as I go out, everything else. As I begin to make all these things lined up from God's perspective, from a kingdom mentality, then all the little things that we worry about, I don't have to pray about them, I have to think about them. It automatically happens. Now, you know, you say that, you know, I was saying that before, but it didn't become a reality. And then I find myself that even as I'm talking to people, I said, this is the reality of the matter. So I think all that I'm learning in the practicality, it's doing a shifting. And my mindset is shifting and my way of, of how I conduct and do things and look at things is beginning to, you know, as I, well, we talk about, you know, when we talk about the mountains and I kind of stressed that yesterday because when I was reading that and doing that thing and coming to, to the, to this, to, we didn't come just to any other mountain, you know, we can look at it from a literal, but no, 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 I'm coming. I know, know where I'm coming to. I know my dwelling place. I know I am. I know my, you know, I am understanding my sonship. I'm understanding all this and it's becoming revolutionized to me that I, I was driving, I was in a meeting and at the prison and I find myself giving directions and strategies and say, no, 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 no. This is how, and, and, in, and, and, and in the meeting, there were different fates, but I found that there was this, I really can't even explain the word, but there was a different, there was a, just a different, uh, that's my audacity uh, was different and, and you know and they were listening like okay you know what she said is like uh, to me so like it doesn't seem like nothing new but i guess in the way of the authoritiveness in which it came out it became a little bit different and then let me just kind of throw a little joke in there i was on my way back from the prison and i was thanking god like god wait a minute you know and i was just praying in the holy ghost and thanking the lord and all of a sudden, um, I was in the middle of traffic and where this person came from, it was like this mad woman just ran to my car and started beating on the window I was at and then just disappeared. And I started laughing and I said, wow, but I, you know, Satan, you just know that I have come into my reality and you're not gonna like it and you're in trouble. So I just thought I wanted to share that, so. Excellent, great. Thank God for that. All right, Sister Lamry, then Sister Holofelo. Okay. Thank you, sir. Um, there's, we've, we've, we've learned so much, but what has come to me in greater reality is why the, why the enemy is so mad at us. I didn't realize that it just, occurred to me you know that god gave us everything everything and he was before and then here we come frail humanity and then god gives us everything all power all authority and he looks at us like, who are these jelly beans that God is loving so much? Mm. And that just flipped me because I realized that everything that I had feared was just him roaring and, you know, making noise like a lion and ash. You know, I need to stand my ground. And that made me determined. And so I began to proclaim. I began to proclaim in the last few days. I began to proclaim what he had called me to do, what he has said me to do. I began to tell everyone, this is what is going to happen. You know, unlike before, I would be scared to speak. I would be like, how, how is that going to be? How is it going to happen? But now, mm -mm, I just began to speak. And then as I studied on the mounts, I realized that as the children of Israel were moving, Moses was moving them to Canaan land and 
they were stopping along the you know along the way they stopped on a mound called horeb and horeb means desolate but they were so comfortable there they weren't going they weren't going to move until god says mm -mm, you've you've dwelt on this mount too long and that hit me you stayed in this place too long you've allowed the devil to have too much freedom on the earth you guys are the ones who are supposed to dwell in the heavenly places with christ jesus seated in the heavenly places you are tribe you dwell in three places at the same time. You are seated there in the heavenly places in the courts of God. And you are supposed to be continuously there every day because there are so many things happening on earth and God is depending on us to speak because he cannot do anything unless a man agrees or a man speaks and god has given us these places we are priests we are kings he has given us everything for us to bring the cases that we want into the courts of god and get judgment every time because everything has been put in our favor there is nothing that can stand against the blood of jesus that was shed so there are the cases of the nations, the, in the, our destinies, our families, and whatever is happening, we have the responsibility to keep coming into God's throne room, into his courts, and plead our case according to his word. And not, it's not by emotion, it's not by crying to God, it's not, it's by his word, the Lord that he has put in place and removing every, every, every legal accusation that the enemy may ever have against our nations, against our lives, against the people around us. So we are, we are supposed to be pretty, really busy people, organizing, demanding, and governing. We don't have to be at a particular location. We but we can always enter into his throne room. It is so awesome. I, I, I was doing a study yesterday, you know, more and more about entering into his throne room. And it's just, it's the, what God has given us is just, <laughs> it's unbelievable, the power that we have. But like you were saying something that we, we have to not only take responsibility, but we also have to remove certain things from our lives. It takes commitment to enter into his throne room all the time, to keep on to stay where we need to stay in holiness, in righteousness, in, in, in our lives, removing all those things that should not be as we have been praying, activating our horns of salvation, of authority in Christ, of the power that he's given us in wisdom, in understanding the fear of the Lord, in might and power. And the possibilities are endless, but it's dependent on us and how we relate to God, what place we begin to give him in our lives. And so this, these are some of the things, some, just some of the things that have really impacted me. It's, it's, it's like a flip over for me. I'm, I'm like gone 180 degrees the other way. So that's, that's Amen. Yeah. excellent. Thank you. That's great. Let's go to Hall of Fellow and then Emmanuel Kisiedu, then Ruth Ojo. I think that should do it. Uh, shalom, sir. Um, I believe coming out of this uh, dominion first, it, it, to me, it, it more than anything is almost like a call to action and a call to action in the sense that to, to be more responsible. Um, I, was, I was grossly convicted by the apostle yesterday when he was, which I, I'll claim it, that sometimes we do use tongues to, to, to shade our ignorance. 
And I took it to, to heart to say that, perhaps consider, not even consider, put it to action that as we are praying and take it as a petition to God to lodge that case in there. And more than anything else, I also, I believe the platform has helped me to put order into my own um, life as to how to undertake the word and to make sure that it accomplishes that to which it's supposed to accomplish and not just live haphazardly around it. I remember a few days ago, um, we had the assignment to go find the keys and second to that assignment was to go reading. Um, I think it was from the book of Matthew and Habakkuk. And that particular day I had only done the keys. When, so when you were asking who has done the reading, I. I proper felt like a dud. But the day after, I did go and read again. And in, I think it was in Matthew, uh, the Lord Jesus was talking about the, the sign of Jonah. And at that point, it was like, what was the sign of Jonah? But somewhere, somehow, the Holy Spirit was helping me. I searched for, on GapNet, I searched on GapNet for Jonah. And I came across a prayer guide from 2010 that, that completely and settled me because all the questions that I was having were answered in the prayer guide. So it, it gave me a directive as to what needs to happen. But yeah, uh, sorry about that. But that, that is my testimony for now. I'm still trying to, to navigate it, but moving forward, I'm excited to what is ahead. Great, excellent. Thank you. Uh, so Emmanuel. Shalom. Uh, one, the, 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 I, I, I got the, uh, I shifted from knowing, you know, uh, Habakkuk 2.20. The Lord is in his holy temple. Let's all be silent before him. It has always been a poem. It has always sound like a poem. Uh, as if it is not me now, I'm, I think I'm now the object of that statement. And therefore, as you be able to act as such. And uh, the Bible in the, the understanding that I've been hearing something like the, the whole Bible is a revelation of Jesus Christ. It is this time that I had the actual understanding of how Genesis man was and when it comes to revelation, how it transposed into revelation and everything become is one piece. Or with different parts. That's why I got to know that yeah, I got the true understanding of what the statement I've been hearing that the whole Bible is a revelation of Jesus Christ. And then when it comes to Hebrews uh, 20, to Hebrews 12, 21, we normally, Moses has actually been really glorified in the Old Testament and even so as it's so, we so embedded in that thing that it so overshadows the New Testament. But and I noticed this time around that even Moses was afraid of the sight of the, the light that I have in the if I dwell in Zion. Moses is afraid of that light. And therefore I have a I'm also having at my disposal a lot of technology, you know, spiritual technology now to be able to execute uh, whatever I have as a child of a son and come into sonship, as a child of God, to come into sonship. Yes, and then uh, now I also got to know this time around that my prayers actually should be in sync with exactly what God is saying, what the son is saying, what the Holy Ghost is saying. So I should be in sync with all these three. So, so that I'll be able to get my room. And I finally, I noticed that I have uh, three functional spiritual offices. I operate in those, I can operate in those offices as an executive, legislature, and then judiciary. Uh, in exercising my priesthood fully as a son, at least uh, my seat of operation is I know where my seat of operation is. Every time I must take it, I must, uh, it's just like put on, I have to put it, put on my, 
armor or my cloak before I sit and work or my working gear. So I have to be at, I have an operational location, which is Zion <laughs> and on the right hand side of my brother, Jesus Christ, <laughs> with the innumerable uh, technologies available to me. I must be able to take full responsibility of what God has endowed me with. Uh, thank you so much. Excellent. Great. Thank you. Uh, Sister Ruth is the next person, right? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Yes. Salam. Sure. Um, so for me, it's three major yeah, things. Uh, wait a minute. Um, let me just get something here. Okay, sir. We've ha have we had... Are you the sixth or the seventh? Sixth or seventh. Sir Richard Hayford, we had, um, you know, the next person was Aline, then we had uh, Lanre, then we had um, Holofello, Holofello, then Emmanuel, then yourself. Okay. So we'll allow, we'll allow Sister Araba then to be the seventh. Go ahead. Okay, sir. Go ahead. You are the sixth. Uh, yes, sir. Sorry, I got muted. I'm just unmuting now. <laughs> okay. Um, so yeah, it's been three major things. I think one, walking in our sonship. So taking responsibility, caring for our father's estate, um, the need to be in sync with God so we don't decree or act outside of his will. So since last year, the Lord had me go through a Bible study on sonship. And in learning from these meetings, um, there's things around sonship that I'm understanding more clearly now. Uh, secondly, just a realization of the enormity of the power of God within us as believers. Um, I think you've, you've expressed this before, sir, how we as light needn't be afraid of the kingdom of darkness. It should be the other way around. I share this before some time back that I really used to struggle with fear, but the Lord has lifted that limitation. And I no longer feel like cowering back at the power of the enemy, like I'm learning to stand up in my authority as a believer even now. And I think lastly, how we approach prayer. This one really hit me yesterday. I got convicted. Um, just how the effectiveness of our petitions to God depends on how we present our case. And I just realized I need to know and understand scriptures more and more. So I would know how to rightly present my case before God. And since yesterday, I've been more cautioned on how I pray and how I approach God. Um, now being more intentional to actually find scriptures um, to pray according to as well. And just realizing there's such a wealth of scriptures available to us um, as God would instruct us that we can use to decree or petition. Um, yeah, so that's, that was pretty cool for me. That's all, sir. Excellent. Great. So Araba, you're the last, go ahead. So um, for me, it, it's been an avalanche of a whole lot of realization and revelation. Um, what um, scriptures that I've read before makes a lot of sense now. Um, I've, I've, I'm getting deeper meanings into scriptures. I think there's been um, there's been a mindset transformation, and the the Holy Spirit has just put on a light where a scripture I've probably read so many times makes a lot of sense now. I mean, um, usually I would go on the um, um, uh, the Bible reading platform, and then it's like just reading. But now that one hour is like, okay, so besides reading, there's a whole lot of revelation. You don't, you can't pass a word and it doesn't give you, you don't get revelation to whatever you are reading. And sometimes you're even asked to repeat the whatever chapter and all of those. Um, the horn of my salvation was what even intrigued me more. And it's like, okay, so I've been reading every time. And I sort of have had an understanding of it, but now the the revelation, or I should say that the rima I've had about it now, it's so awesome that, I mean, there've been I don't know, I know a lot of people have spoken, and time is far gone, but I mean, I've been faced with certain challenges since this, and I'm I'm able to carry through, you know, knowing that 
Yeshua is the horn of my, he's the strength of my salvation. And, and the Bible tells us rightly that, I mean, we are seated in him. So, you know, right now it's, it's no more about some story somebody is saying, but it's like you are part of it. I'm part of it and I'm able to move from it being a, a, an abstract thing. Not that it was abstract, but now it's it's a small rail. It is like as close as the water you drink, you know, that kind of thing. So, um, yeah, so and somehow with all these realizations, I realize that enemy starts to bamboozle you with so many situations. And uh, fortunately or unfortunately for him and fortunately for me, uh, you know, the revelations I'm having now is helping me, you know, um, deal with some of these things that are thrown at me. Um, I also have learned that, I mean, there is a, there's a cross between arise and shine for your light has come and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. And when we're talking about the mountains, I realized that, yes, of course, the Bible tells us also, I think that he made that reference that sometimes no one, when he has lit a lamp, puts it in a cellar or under a bushel. Meaning that, I mean, um, we are light, so we definitely are on the mountain. And we have to shine. You see, as the arise and shine for your light has come. So if our light has come um, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon us, it's like light drives away darkness. Um, so once you are light, you you are on that high place. You are, uh, you'll be recognized. You are no more in the valley, but you are on, on the height. That has to be recognized. That people have to see you, and through your actions, I mean, you realize that now you want becomes more tolerable. And I'm speaking about myself. It's like certain things that I would naturally would have reacted. Now you respond to it. You you look at it. So how would um, the Holy Spirit expect you to respond to this situation, not as in react to the situation. So it's like you can see there's a lot of growth. There's a lot of patience, and within this. Um, fasting I've, I've not been well so i'm not really fasting as in going out away from food because i have to take certain medication but what i've also come but i've been studios and you know reading and all of those and what i've come to also realize is that i didn't have love one of the things that i one thing i'm taking home i think there are a lot and i don't want to drag us but one thing that is is become more in my because i thought i was an empath and i'm somebody who is always in other people's business trying to help and all of this but i realized that i didn't have love the holy spirit has shown me the love of god in a, a way that makes me feel like okay i didn't have love at all so now it's a lot of repentance going to the lord okay so this one it, i thought of it through my own understanding and everything so it's, it's a whole new experience is that i mentioned is an avalanche of it's like a whole lot of things that i'm grabbing and picking up one by one but it's it's also become like a tool it's become a, a machinery that is helping me tackle all the challenges and the issues that are thrown on me. So that's a little to say in the time frame that we have now. So God bless you all. Oh, thank you very much. Oh, excellent. Now, obviously, if we were to allow everybody, everyone will have something to say, but I had given the limit of seven. But if we just summarize what has been said, it started with the aspect of Mount Zion. Now, when you understand that you have come to Mount Zion, the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, to the global headquarters of God's government, then it helps you to understand then that it is by the policies and then the specific edicts the specific legislative instruments, executive instruments, uh, specific judgments written that you're supposed to be executing as saints of God, that you now reign on the earth because he says he's made us kings and priests unto our God and we shall reign on the earth. As to the government of God at the appropriate time will teach the whole thing so that with the, you know, aspect of the three arms that people have taken, the challenge we have is that unfortunately is the copied, perverted form, you know, edited form that quite a number of people have been uh, exposed to, um, are familiar with. 
So they don't really understand when you talk about the government of God and we're supposed to be reigning on the earth. Because he didn't say we shall reign in heaven because there is only one king. So, but on the earth he's made us kings, plural, and priests unto our God. Meaning, if you don't understand the aspect of kingship, you understand the priesthood, which will have all of those areas. But if you were just looking at kings for the executive arm, then you will still see the two others in the priesthood. If you wanted to take the fact that he says you're a chosen generation with the quantum ration of God's genes given to you to express in the space of time that he has given you to operate, then automatically as a gene ration generation, you would know what to do. But anyway, let me leave that. Let me go to the fact that, okay, in terms of the edicts and the specific instructions, you have the rhema, which is what I believe Sister Arlene was now talking about, because I just showing you what Brother Richard talked about. So now she talked about the rhema, because until something becomes a rhema to you, it's just scripture. And all scripture is given by the inspiration of God, perfect. And it's profitable first for formation of doctrine, then for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, that the man of God might be equipped, thoroughly furnished unto every good work. So until you get there, you're still, you know, growing generally. And, you know, it's good. Let me not take them one by one. It's good that we started talking about the aspect of, okay, we learned uh, authority in Christ and the fact that all authority in heaven and on earth or the entire universe has been given unto the Lord Jesus Christ and has given that to us. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders. So it's after that his name shall be called Wonderful or Miracle, Counselor or Guide to the Nations, you know, Mighty God or the Creator of Champions, then Everlasting Father or the Father of Eternity, the one who determines the times and seasons within the eternal expression of God where time occurs just as a little portion of the eternal being eternal nature, eternal character, eternal person, eternal function of God that you're all supposed to be partakers of. Anyway, so that I don't take too much time on that, I, I hope you're getting it because, you know, the temptation usually when you have one revelation is to abandon the rest and then go on now. No, no, it's only things that you realize you were practicing wrongly that you abandon. Whatever you're pr practicing rightly, you should add what you are now receiving to that. Because at the end of the day, I've heard some of the people talking about, you know, prayers, and I agree. If you were to go to 1 Timothy chapter 2, right from verse 1 all the way to verse 5, I mean, you could go further than that, but at least verses 1 to 5, you will notice that you're given different types of prayer. One time I taught on 26 different types of prayer. And, you know, some were subsets of others. So if you're just talking of broad outline, broad, broad, broad outline, maybe 12. Now, so it's important for you to realize that what you're dealing with is much, much wider than that. Even when it comes to the legislative or judicial powers, or executive powers, what level of expression, what level of operation should you actually see? And how do we help you to go from, you know, children stage one to children stage two, to young men stage one, to young one stage two, to father stage one, to father stage two? You know, the average believer has not been taken through that. So you don't know how to go from, you know, 
I write to you, children, because your sins are forgiven and everything that has to do with healing, deliverance, all that, that's for children, stage one. And then stage two, you know, you've known the Father and all that, you're experiencing the presence of God and all that, you really, that's still for children because that's stage two for children. Maybe I should take you to that scripture so we can see that because I was going to go just straight to the aspect of, okay, so if you're going to pray, how would you pray these prayers? But let me go step by step first. I know today is mainly for prayer. So in terms of, you know, children's stage two, you've known the father and this and that. Then young men stage one, you have personal victories where you've overcome the devil and you know, he, you're not afraid of him. He should rather be afraid of you, et cetera, et cetera. And you know, you're as bold as a lion, et cetera. Until you come to stage two, where now you do not only have that level of boldness and you know, victory, but now you know the word, it abides in you, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You come to the place where you have corporate victory. You actually are able to go and fight on behalf of others and gain the thing for the entire community. Like we saw the example of Jonathan, the son of Saul, uh, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. <coughs> Excuse me, or David, you know, on the battlefield with Goliath. You know, things like that. And then you come to Father Stage 1. I better... Um, can everybody hear me? Yes, because, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, so, please, sir. May, maybe the person that is talking about the sound going low, it might have been that probably because of the fluctuation of internet service either on your side or my side. It went low briefly. But anyway, let's go on with what I was saying. So let me uh, quickly get back to the scripture itself so I can help you with the, you know, the various levels because I said first, the government of God, right? And uh, I said, we are operating from the headquarters, but there are some who are into local government or governance. And even in the judiciary, it's not everybody that is a judge yet. You start as lawyers. And from lawyers, you become a judge. You know, you're appointed because you have what it takes, et cetera, et cetera, which yesterday you heard uh, the man of God make reference to. But let me just move on. So let me <clears throat> uh, go straight to First John. Let me do First John, because you know First Timothy is still playing around in my mind. But let me go to First John chapter two. Uh, maybe I just start from verse ten. Okay. As we have talked about light, we've talked about, you know, uh, salt, we've talked about horns, we've talked about eyes, we've talked about said so many things. So let me just go to 1 John chapter 2 from verse 10. And that's where I believe we need to start from today. And it will all be for the same purpose of prayer. All right, excellent. First John chapter two, and we're reading from verse 10. All right, I'm sure everybody can see it. Yes, sir. All right, whoever loves his brother, a believer like him or her, abides, lives in the light. 
whoever loves his brother. If you don't love your brother, you are still in darkness. And I know, for example, some people keep talking about, you know, Philadelphia, Adelphos, you know, which is talking of somebody from the same womb, from the same mother. So, you know, when it talks about the brother from the scriptural, you know, point of view, if I were to take you to the complete word study Bible, let me just show you, you know, there, it actually talks about Adelphos, whoever loves his Adelphos. That's, I know for you, you might just be seeing a black thing there, but what they're talking of is, uh, you know, something that is talking of unity. One, being from the root, same root, original, because members of the same, uh, you know, uh, uh, as, let, me, let me go to the root. It denotes uh, Delphos, which is a womb, Delphos. Now, Adelphos or Adelphe or Adelpho then has to do with somebody that is coming from the same womb, from the same womb, literally speaking now, of the same origin, you know, fellowship based on identity of origin, members of the same family, members of the same tribe, countrymen. It, I, I'm saying it and it, it looks very simple, but let me ask you, the last time you went to a strange country and you met somebody from your country of origin, what happened? Somebody answer me. It was a novel feeling. You, you felt, you felt, you know, an affinity to that person. Meanwhile, I mean, when you're in the same country, big deal. Now, how about if you are in the capital city and you met somebody from the same tribe? How do you feel? Yes. Somebody, I'll raise a hand. Go ahead. How do you feel? Somebody from the same tribe. I guess you don't feel anything, right? No, not really. <laughs> <laughs> if, 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 if you Kingdom. met some, sorry, um, Emmanuel, go ahead. Sorry, sir. I was saying you, you, you have a sense of a kindredness. There's a kindredness yes, there. Yeah. When you... Okay, kindred spirit. That was John. Okay. You know, you have yeah. a sense of affinity. Okay. You feel your home. You feel that you're home because it's like uh, this person speaks the same language with me, yes. especially if it's in a city where they don't speak your language. Maybe the challenge with some people is that they don't even realize how it could feel when you are in a place where nobody else is speaking your language except you. The same from the same tribe. Now, how about people from the same family? You might see each other every day. But still, when you meet anywhere where you have others other than your family, if anybody should try to touch your family member, even though you might not be the best of friends at home, what normally happens? You go try to defend them. Ah, so you become protective, you go on the defensive, you might even fight on the person's behalf and all of that. All right. How about if it's not just from the same family, you're from the same womb and you are in a polygamous home? What happens if siblings are fighting a half or step brothers or sisters and this is from the same womb? What happens?
Somebody help me. You take sides <laughs> immediately. You take sides with the one from the same womb. Yeah. That's precisely the point. So you now yeah, imagine that you are coming from your original hometown, which is called the heavenly Jerusalem, Mount Zion, the city of the living God, Kadabayatosovorsky. And you are sent on a mission by God. And you're the vice regent of God. You're the ambassador of God. You're, I, I could go on to the various levels because if ambassadors don't just think about them and their family, they think about everybody from that country, true or false? True. True. Precisely that is, you see, you see the level at which we're operating? Anyway, I was just talking about Delphos within that one verse, and we haven't gone far. You know, he that loveth his brother, that's Adelphos. And I have not even, I could have given you from five different dictionaries, biblical dictionaries, complete word study Bible, you know, olive a tree, a, a, a strong expanded, you know, et cetera, et cetera including the others that, you know, people are not too familiar with. Anyway, let me move on. So he that loves, I, I believe we're together. He that loves his brother abides in the light and there is no occasion of stumbling in him, not a single occasion. But he that hates his brother is in darkness and walks in darkness and knows not where, where he's going. I better change it back to a more modern translation. I was just taking you to the complete word study Bible. Okay, whoever loves his brother, be, be, his fellow believer, abides, that is, lives in the light. And in it or in him, there is no occasion for stumbling or cause for error or sin. But he who hates, that is, detests and despises his brother in Christ. It's in darkness and walking, that is living in the dark. He is strained, does not perceive or know where he is going because the darkness has blinded his eyes. Verse 12, I am writing to you little children because for his name's sake, your sins are forgiven. Pardon through his name and on account of confessing his name. Verse 12, I'm writing to you little children. So that's the first thing. Because for his name's sake, your sins are forgiven. That's children stage one. Pardon through his name and on account of confessing his name. So forgiveness of sins, healing of sickness and disease, because they are children's bread. You get it. So that level is just children stage one. You're enjoying your salvation. I mean, the first day you got saved, you really felt like you're on top of the world. You know, that's the end of everything. Until later you realize, okay, there is more to it. So that's children stage one. And the average believer, including some men and women of God, or should they be called children of God, male and female, all they have been really operating in is that which has to do with forgiveness of sin, the healing of sicknesses and diseases, deliverance from every form of bondage, et cetera, et cetera. That's just children stage one. I'm writing to you fathers because you have come to know, recognize, be aware of and understand him who has exist existed from the beginning. So, as fathers, stage one, but I will, I will get to that because we're dealing with children stage one and stage two. So let me finish with that before I come back. I'm writing to you young men because you have been victorious over the wicked one. I write to you boys, you see, that's children stage two. Boys, lads, because that's the word that was used in the Greek, it referred to a lad. Because you have come to know recognize and beware of the father so oh i feel the embrace has god ever embraced you do you know what it feels like i've heard some men and women of god 
saying that. I'm like, okay, it's good, beautiful, but that self a lot. So in your expression within the government of God, you need to know that children are not the ones who rule. They have to be under tutors and governance, a uh, governors. Come on, Galatians chapter 4, from verse 1. For the heir, as, he, as long as he remains a child, differs nothing from a hireling. For he is under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the father to come to that place of full expression. I hope I'm clear enough so far. Have you understood yes. children's stage one, children's yes, stage sir. two? Yes, sir. I'm yes, not sir. teaching. I'm just trying to guide you so that when you're praying, you pray and say, okay, God, as you help me to navigate, to get to the next stage, help me to even know how to operate in the three areas of expression of your government, whether the judicial powers, the legislative powers, the executive powers. Let me know where I am at and what to enjoy and what to express. All right, let me start verse 13 again so that you can see young men stage one. I'm writing to you fathers because you have come to know, recognize, be aware of and understand him who has existed from the beginning. I'm writing to you, young men, that's stage one now, because you've been victorious over the wicked one. All right? So that's young men, stage one. All right, so verse 14 now. I write to you, fathers, because you've come to know, recognize, be conscious of, and understand him who has existed from the beginning. Then I write to you, young men, because you're strong and vigorous. And the word of God is always abiding in you, in your hearts. And you have been victorious over the wicked one. So that's young men stage two. The young men stage one is you have personal victory in various areas. Glory to God. Every sphere of existence, expression, society, universe, etc., etc personal victory where now you have personal revelation according to Matthew 13 where you have a root in yourself but let me leave that so stage two I write to you young men because you are strong so be strong in the Lord and the power of his might and all that very good for we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities powers you see that's what I was talking about principalities that are in charge of nations, etc. because now you're going to communal victory. You are ready to engage the enemy on behalf of territories because you have come to the place where now you are strong in the Lord and the power of his might and you have put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles, the strategies, the orchestrations, conspiracies, you know, everything of the enemy. And then, wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, for we wrestle, not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness of this world, spiritual wickedness in heavenly places, or high places, actually, correctly translated. And then, it says, Wherefore, take unto you the whole arm of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, having done all to stand. That's now talking about you're going to battle on behalf of the nation for the territorial integrity of the territory that you're supposed to be occupying and mm -hmm. now being a territorial controller, controller, territorial, you know, for lack of a better word, uh, member of the armed forces where you go to fight on the battlefield. So you train, you do everything, you go through all the you know, uh, uh, drills and 
the various you know iterations and all of that so that then you know by the time you go to the battlefield you have all that it takes so you put on not to put off again so you'll be able to stand in the evil day having done all to stand stand there for having your loins girt about with truth which are to do with the belt of truth uh, and all the other things that are there sanctify them through thy word for thy word is truth etc etc let me leave that then he gives you all the pieces of the armor in that passage of Ephesians chapter 6. You now are in a place that you do not only deal with things on in the hand-to-hand -hand combat, but he says, praying with all prayer and supplication for all saints. Like I said, I've taught on 26 in a particular conference, 26 types of prayer. That's probably late 70s, early 80s. But because this is the place now of being one of those young men that are getting to the place that you are gaining communal victory, gaining you know, victory at certain levels, that you will be ready to now stand and defend the territorial integrity of the kingdom, et cetera, et cetera. And you are vigorous, you are passionate, you are zealous. The zeal for the Lord's house consumes you. Then like Jesus, you drive out. Jesus didn't need to change money. Jesus didn't need to do anything. He just said, my house shall be called, my father's house shall be called the house of prayer. As you say, you know, you've turned my father's house into a house of yeah, a den of thieves and robbers because they were now, and I don't know what Jesus would do today if he came to quite a number of places because quite a number of men and women of God have become businessmen and women that are actually having their own businesses called churches. And by the way, the church, Jesus did not come to build a church. He never came to build a church. He came to build the ecclesia. I notice sometimes because we're so used to the word church, even when some of you are praying, you will talk about ecclesia and then still at church. On, on this rock, I'll build my ecclesia, which is completely different. Is the body, is a governmental word. You already heard that, and I better stop. See, today is not for teaching per se. So, you are vigorous, and the word of God has come to abide in you. Because if you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will, it shall be done unto you. Either to have you asked nothing in my name. Ask and you shall receive that your joy may be full. That's, you know, John chapter 15 from verse 17, you know, going. Jesus is the one speaking here. So when the word of God abides in you, you actually become like somebody who is making decrees now. That's still at the level of young men. Stage one, I mean stage two, sorry, stage two. And you have been victorious over the wicked one at the corporate level, at the communal level, at the national level, at the continental level, at the global level. Does it mean that when you get to national, continental, you are not transiting, you are now transiting to Father Stage 1? That's what we are now trying to get you to understand. That when you even talk of government, you're not just talking about the legislative aspect of government. You're not just talking about the judicial aspect of governance. You're not just talking about the executive, you know, aspect of governance is the 
composite, comprehensive, you know, all components together. So fathers then are not only people who recognize him who has existed from the beginning, who is the beginning of all existence, who is the one that contains everything, including eternity itself, who is the father of eternity, because at the level of sonship, you know, when you get to the inflection point of young men stage two, you would actually become like one who understands how to father eternity with Jesus, where then at least sustainability is the most important thing to you. It's not just doing things, it's how sustainable would they be and building sustainability into systems so you begin to build system, et cetera, et cetera. That is left for the day we'll do the teaching on this. Now, so then at that level, you are ready now to get into father stage one. And father stage one is the one you are recognized, you are aware of, and you understand. Did you get that? You recognize, you are aware of, you understand him who has been from the beginning. All right, that's verse 13. Then go to verse 14. Father stage two. I wish we had all the time on our hands. Verse 14, I write to your fathers because you've come to know. This time, not only recognize and aware of, but you're conscious of consistently. You live in his presence. You operate from his presence. So you are not only realizing that you are on Mount Zion, you are from Mount Zion. You actually are operating with the mountain that follows you. That's a different story altogether because they actually go from place to place. You can go on a tour from the headquarters. You can go on a tour. The president of a nation can tour the entire nation. And anytime he is operating, Wherever he is, he is operating as though he is operating from the seat of government. If he says something in a particular state or province or region or governorate, depending on what you call your own, your nomenclature in your own nation, he is considered seriously to have settled things there. And then, you know, there are times he has to go back because there are certain things that are only in his headquarters office that he needs to use unless they fly it down to him. So I just want you to know that it's almost like you are carrying the headquarters everywhere you go since in him you live and move and have your being. That's why another day. So, so you get to that level and the fatherhood stage two is more serious than you think, but that will be left for the day we have to teach and then we'll move on from there. So I've said enough for this to just say that even in that government, you should know which stage you are in and then know how to operate with God in the affairs of men ruling with God in the affairs of men. So in summary, what we have said is that, you know, having made us kings and priests unto our God, we shall reign on the earth. It means that you bring gladness everywhere you go, because when the righteous are in authority, everyone rejoices. I could take you to Proverbs 28, Proverbs 29. I could take you even to Psalm 97, uh, 99 to an extent because 99 will be now for the other side. When I take my rifle position, you know, and I begin to reign with God on the earth, now the other side will have to end up, you know, having some challenges. But don't let me go far and wide. All I'm saying is that, you know, thrones, dominions, before principalities, powers, et cetera, et cetera would be understood when you operate from that level of at least young men stage two and father stage one 
and best father stage two. Let me stop here unless there is any comment, question, point of clarification. I will want to ask people to show me how they will use what they have learned so far to pray because we want to be practical. Is there any question, comment, point of clarification, contribution before we now move on? Quickly. So I think it will be good to <clears throat> um, sort of define, I mean, I'm talking about each of us, it's going to be good to define first and foremost, what is the area of jurisdiction you want to focus on in exercising your authority and, and in, 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 you know, in ruling. So in other words, I think, you know, to be specific in prayer, target a particular locale. In other words, are you going to focus on your family, for example? Um, are you going to focus on your neighborhood are you going to focus on your city so there's got to be a settling i think first and foremost of which area are you targeting so you're not broad and 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 and, and scattered but you're focused on a particular aspect of our lives that you want to focus on in exercising this because we, we want to you know develop and continue to grow and increase as we go along just like you said you've got to appreciate your level of operation so I think it's, it's going to be important to, first and foremost, identify the locale you want to target in prayer and yeah. be sure about what that is. Once that's done... You've just then... said something before you finish that. Just yes, said something that you need to assess before God where you are at. That's the first thing. Before, okay... So where is the Lord sending you? Mm -hmm. Because he says, pray ye the Lord of the harvest, that he might send the laborers. So first of all, go to him, find out where you are. If you think that's a religious thing, go to him. That's not what I'm talking about. I am talking about your sitting before the Lord, reasoning before the Lord, that means you actually look at what are the characteristics of children. Where am I at? Am I at the level of, you know, maybe the peers uh, or any of the things that we have taught before you even come to the other levels? Where am I at? Because the lad is a different level, okay? But he's still a child. Because um, I could have gone preppers and the peers, this, that, 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 but I don't want to go into those ones in the Greek. So you said something that is very important. So don't you think we should start from there in terms of our praying? Yes, sir. Um... Absolutely. I, I was just, um, I, I felt like maybe that's, I just want to share that. Um, as it, you no, know. Go ahead. I, I actually, you know, interjected because I wanted you to continue, but just highlight something you said in passing, that mm -hmm. that's the beginning point before you go to the next level where now you are actually praying, okay, Lord, that now that you have shown me the harvest field, Okay, there, which is my immediate target before I keep increasing the circle of coverage. I, I believe that's what you're saying, isn't it? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And so that I was just enhancing more, for lack of a better word, what you're saying, just for clarity for everybody. Uh, so go on, finish what you're saying. I don't want to stop you. I was just trying to get that drilled down. Amen. Amen. And so then from after that identification, and I love how you just brought it out, you know, uh, after we identify what stage you are at, <clears throat> that will probably also speak into uh, what scope we can cover. 
whether you're talking about personal or family or neighborhood or community or city or etc you know there has to be a match in those areas and then once we identify where we are at and what locale we are targeting then now reckon ourselves functioning from mount zion and you know appreciating you know what needs to happen within the locale we identified so whether it's a, it's going to be do we need to bring a legislative um, expression do we need to bring an executive expression or a judicial expression you know determine that and then when when that is clear then um step into that office and 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 take words and, and begin to if there's a need to make petitions take words with you go to court get the verdict and then release it um there's one thing dr Marco, that has been that, that, that i think is very key allow me just to share this briefly and then um i'll be able to uh, you know sign off uh, but i think it's important for it to be fixed in our minds that we are kings <laughs> you know and 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 priests obviously but our god is a king he functions as a king obviously that's the executive arm of it but you know that's important and, and the way things happen kings in the kingdom kings rule by decree and i think sometimes we get very much especially coming from a religious background mindset we wonder you know how, how is this going to happen you know what's what do i need to do we think there's some gymnastics that needs to happen um we, we figure that there's got to be some labor some you know uh, i don't know what, what we, we always think but i think it's good to appreciate that we are made in the image and likeness of the king of the universe we are vice regents like you keep saying we are kingly so whenever we are handling an issue it's not gymnastics it's not you know all kinds of um, activities and and you know uh, those may be necessary but i'm talking about establishing it it's by declaration I think it's good to appreciate the power of declaration that, you know, the way we set things in motion is by speaking with the authority of a king, recognizing that I actually am a king. And I have the authority to, um, to, 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 to cause things to happen by edict, by decree, by declaration, you know, so that, and then once I make the decree, I don't get, I'm not going to bother about all the mechanics of how it's going to happen. I think that's one of the things that the enemy many times catches believers in is trying to figure out the mechanics of how it's going to happen. I don't think the mechanics are important because the king is, you know, he makes an edict, he makes a declaration. I think it would release a lot of us from wondering even how to operate in faith because sometimes you want to figure out how faith is going to work, what's going to, you know, how do you, what will happen, how, I don't see how this can happen. No, no, no. The key thing is you are a king, you make the decree, you establish it, and that's it. And the mechanics will follow. You know, we know from someone or three of us, 19 and 20 and all that, that's the, that's the mechanical part of it. But I think it's key for us to be released from the pressure of trying to figure out how things happen when we are speaking in faith and decreeing by faith, because we are operating from the headquarters of the universe. We are speaking, we have the authority to do this. It's a declaration, it's a bold and faith declaration with the assurance that the word of a king, where the, where the word of a king is, is there is power. So we, we, we need to release that power by making the decree and the declaration with authority and confidence and assurance. And then knowing that that's, that's how kings operate. This is how I operate. This, I make the decree in faith as long as I know it's in agreement with the word of God, as long as I've gotten you know, the decrees or the verdicts or whatever I need, that I'm, I'm clear about the expression I'm bringing into this situation. And I have the word of the Lord on it. I have received a verdict of it. I am making a bold declaration and my words will move what needs to move and you know, set into motion the mechanics to bring about the result. I yield my case. Right. Thank you very much. Great, awesome. Any other person? I hope you notice the aspect of the first John chapter two, where I was talking about whether it's personal because at the level of even young men stage one, they're still doing personal victory. 
And I'd be aspect of fellowship in terms of worshiping the Father, etc. But that's different. But when it comes to now you're going to have victory for everybody, then that's stage two before you go to fathers. Yes, somebody had their hand up. Yeah, Emmanuel Kisir, do go ahead. Yeah, I, I wanted to find out something. How about one of the areas we saw is that just shall live by faith. Now, if you just shall live by faith and anything that... As confronts, have you, yeah, go ahead. If anything that confronts you, uh, uh, the fear of your mandate depends on... It, ha, it has a, a proportional degree to your faith. So how do you balance the two? Because... I'm not I'm not getting the picture clearly because if I have faith to do handle something, uh, the the limitations, where is the limitation also coming? What well, what what is faith first of all? Evidence of Evidence of things seen, but not uh, the substance of things seen and uh, what well, the substance of things hoped for, for the evidence of evidence things of not things seen. Not seen. Okay. So again, we're back to what I was saying from the beginning, and that's not to say that. You know, you are in this stage or that stage. It is between you and God. I, when you do a very, you know, objective analysis of where things are at. As some people, even the fundamental principles of the doctrine of Christ, one, they haven't got yet. And we need to, we can't do shortcut. That's why we seem to be floating today. We're here tomorrow we're there, the day after we get to grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. So in terms of faith, what is faith? You have just answered from Hebrews chapter 11. Or if you were to go, you would have started from one verse three and going on to 11 from verse 1 down to probably the end, because that's where you have everything about faith. So faith, there are so many facets to faith. But the scripture you quoted was Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 4, the just shall live by his faith. Maybe, uh, let me see, uh, oh, we don't have that much time. I'd have taken you there so that we can read it together let me allow others speak so that then we can pray in the next five minutes. We have to try and get it. In fact, the next three, maximum five minutes, we should be praying. So who else quickly, because we want to move on. Yeah, I'm um, um, trying to see who raised a hand. Ole Lofe, okay. Uh, Ole I, had a, <laughs> I, had a, I had a question. If, when, rather, when you do the objective analysis of where you are, right, and you get to pinpoint where it is that you are, moving between the different stages, how do you, or how would you then see that perhaps God is, is moving you in, in, in a particular stage, or I would say outgrowing, because people outgrow stages in life. How do you then know that, obviously, well, not obviously, this is a transitional stage then for a next okay. level or a next season? I already heard some people today talking. Between the time you started following this 50 days, Wow, I said 50 days, 40 days fast. And now, what would you think your spiritual level is like? My own. Yes. 
from from what we've been learning yes pinpointing myself i think if if i'm being honest with myself i think it's between from just the training i've been getting here i'd say i have an unction now to move from young men stage one and move further Oh, right. that's it's just my estimates but i could be overreaching as well no challenge i mean it's good to start somewhere but what i was even asking about is do you notice any movement between the time you started coming for these meetings and now yes yeah, a very exponential move as but precisely, that's my point. So as to whether or not you will know when you have transition or you are transitioning, that is a given. You would know. You will experience it. But as to what level in that transition you're moving from to the other, it will require this objective, you know, for lack of a better word, uh, analysis of whatever it is using the mirror of the world because you go look at yourself in the mirror in the light of James chapter 1 uh, verses 21 all the way to 25 particularly verse 23 to 25 is where you have the mirror okay and when you look at it from yeah, Second Corinthians chapter three, verse eighteen in particular, that's when you'll be transformed from glory to glory, being made conformable to the image of his son. So that's how I believe it will help you to now know okay, which stage was I in? There is no harm, even if you are at children stage one. There is nothing wrong with it. Just find out. Besides, there are times that the only confusion sometimes is that you realize in this area of expression you seem to be still at the children's stage one but this other expression you seem to be at young men's stage one so you say so which one am i in no different expressions see what started this whole discussion today in terms of just trying to get people to understand unpack and pray i said that even in terms of governance from Mount Zion, you should know whether it is in the legislative you know, arena or the executive arena or the you know, judicial arena, you should know what stage of operation you are in so that you know whether you're somebody just enjoying the provisions or you're somebody now beginning to you know, harness that for the community, etc. And then one that actually sits down now to make policies, etc., etc., which I didn't go into today. So, does that help? Yes, it does, sir. Thank you. All right. Okay. I know that. There have been one or two more that will be given the opportunity, but looking at our time, you need to forgive me. We've got to stop here and pray. Um, so what I will want you to do is take about two minutes at most. Yes, two minutes at most, because then the rest of the two minutes I can use for administering the elements of the communion. So take about two minutes at most and just reflectively pray. Uh, if you want to pray, I can put a particular scripture up for you. Uh, no, but you, you wouldn't necessarily know the, the, the various words that I've been used in the Greek. So it's okay, you just go ahead and pray. Just go ahead and pray, because I don't want to start that one now. It's okay, go ahead and pray. Just talk to God, talk to your father, and just reflectively look at things and see where you are at, and where you ought to be going next so that you can pray accordingly and the Lord helping you, you operate as one of those that makes a difference wherever you go in the name of the Lord Jesus. So go ahead and do that quickly.
Well, I've given you your full two minutes. Now, Father, we thank you for the body of Jesus that was broken for us, the blood of Jesus that was shed for us. As we partake of these elements of the communion, that did not just be a religious act, a religious, you know, right that we're observing, let it be true expression of kingdom life. And let the kingdom authority, because Jesus said, all authority in the universe has been given unto me. Go ye therefore. Meaning I'm giving you that authority. Help us not to take that authority for granted, but utilize it to establish your kingdom on earth according to your original plan and purpose. In the most excellent name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The body of Jesus broken for you, take it. The blood of Jesus shed for you, take drink. The grace that enables you operate as a true son that the whole world has been waiting for, the whole universe has been waiting for. That level of the love of the Father that enables you to pray the prayers of God, as it is written in 1 Timothy chapter 2, and other passages that show the expression of God's love for the entire universe, particularly the world. And that partnership, our koinonia, transportation into the same wavelength, being able to keep in step with the Holy Spirit, be your portion in expression as you represent God in reality. In the name that's above all names, Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory and of grace. Amen. Amen. Come to you. Thank you Amen. for Shalom. the privilege Thank of you. your attention, your time. Maybe if uh, Auntie P, Reverend Donna Hammond, has any announcements or uh, Emmanuel, any of the people. Has... Yes. Um, this is a gentle reminder that. Uh, I'm still collecting the voluntary contributions so we could publish the, the prophecies. So those who haven't yet submitted, please do so. God bless you. Amen. Uh, shalom. See you tomorrow, God willing. Uh, some of us have quite a few global things that we're handling tomorrow. But we'll see how God helps us to straddle between the meetings. Shalom. Shalom. Um, they were asking you how the internationals can contribute. Okay, they are putting the thing up for you. And then also apart from that, uh, they might also probably by tomorrow or the day after, give you people in your regions, if you let them, them know which regions. Shalom. Uh, South Africa, please. Okay. I believe if you got in touch with Sister Eugenia, she might guide you because she's done this several times. Um, you do have um, others like Veronica, but Eugenia is the one that is the most uh, experienced in this particular area. It doesn't mean she's the only one. Okay, all right, thank you. I'll reach out to her, so thank you. All right. Thank you.